just get lost with me No microchips planted in me I'm not a hippie, but I do hippie things Perhaps it's a sense of historical camaraderie, or my love of pastries, or because I spent nine years teaching French children music in New York. Whatever the case, I have a connection with France. In fact is, the revolutionary alliance between France and the USA changed the course of our world, and our cultures are inexorably linked because of it. Okay, so I'm here at Prats in Pigalle, in Paris. You are in a, how do you say, no go zone here. A no go zone yeah. for Fox? You, you heard about that? No. A no go zone in Paris? Yeah. They made like a resort, <laughs> but the, the, the areas you have to go, if you don't want to go when you're a tourist. And Pigalle, where, where we are now, Pigalle was one of these. So what? I uh, started up so what? just because I was really uh, in love with the uh, natural wine. Natural wine is just the way our grand grand grandparents and uh, uh, were doing the wine like uh, hundred years, years ago. No additives, no chemical products. In second, I'm really in love with this time we call in France apéro. So it's all the risotto, pate, cheese. Yeah, born and raised in Paris, so few Parisian products. And uh, pure Parisian product. That's a lot. Hey, girls. <laughs> It's a great spot here. You can try some natural wine, have some salsa, have yeah. some cheese. And so tonight we're having a great show. Oh, it's about it's to happen. My, my man, Dustin D. <laughs> D. That's, that's, that's my new name. When the apéro is really rolling, you come to understand that French phrase, joie de vivre. Because that's really what it's all about. The joy of life. There's no way you can be, there's no way you're meant to be. It's easy. Thomas called his natural wines Le Vins des Amis, which means the wine for friends. And he said he selects the wines to energize the evening in the social apéro style. Live music is pretty good for that too. And my guitar followed me to my next apéro stop on the Ile Saint Louis, an island on the Seine and right in the smack dab middle of Paris. <laughs> I was invited by my friend Rose and had no idea what I was in for. What I thought would be a typical picnic, a chill gathering of a few people, turned out to be an all-out party. By sundown, everyone was making new friends. All these different groups were mixing and matching and singing and sharing. I was eventually propositioned to play a rendition of Happy Birthday in exchange for a shot of whiskey. The more I get to know Paris, the more I'm turned on to its bustling social scene. If you don't know where to go, Paris can appear kind of sleepy. But head to places like this one in neighborhoods like Pigalle, Amare, and Oberkampf, and you'll find the Parisian wild side. Okay, she lived in Paris, and it was like, okay, yeah, whatever, I live in Paris. <laughs> but then she went elsewhere, United States, and she came back to Paris, and it changed her mind changed your mind about Paris? Yeah, I did. Parce que... Parce que il faut que je parle en français maintenant. So yeah, <laughs> dites-moi en français. <laughs> Parce que j'ai vu que Paris c'était une très jolie ville. Oh oui, it's a beautiful city. <laughs> I will translate as much as I can. <laughs> I understand that far. A little greeting. My uh, French slash world history about father of Alexander Dumas, but I'm here in the Luxembourg Gardens, which is a great place to go to sit and read, and then you can just walk right over to, right over to Montparnasse, where, a very famous area between the two world wars, where uh, ridiculous lists of writers, painters, thinkers, uh, all the great artists, many great artists of the day, I mean, it's just the list is absurd. Kiki de Montparnasse was an artist of this famous era and mused to some of its timeless names. Ernest Hemingway wrote, and I quote, She was about as close as people get nowadays to being a queen. But this, of course, is very different from being a lady. <laughs> this new musical is about her life, and it was composed by my friend and colleague Reinhard Wagner. And this leading lady, that's his daughter. 
Oh, you know this song? Ah, it's your song. He was... Oh, yeah, not my song, but yours. <laughs> <laughs> A phenomenon happening all over Europe and in every one of the train stations in Paris is the Play Me Piano. It's what you see here, and anyone can sit and play. Often you'll find lively sing-alongs around these pianos, several of which I've orchestrated myself. But it was time for me to leave Paris and head south to a place where I learned how to at Perot. It's a beautiful home just outside the tiny town of ile sur la sorgue in the famous region of Provence. I'm a lucky man sometimes. Can you see me? Because I am in a chateau in the south of France. The two people on the right, Gilles and Jizu, are the parents of the girl standing up, Lorianne, who is a friend from the earlier days in New York when she and her longtime boyfriend and my NYC soccer buddy Cedric were working there. Several years ago, Gilles and Jizu completely renovated what is essentially a farmhouse and turned it into the provincial paradise it is now. The other side. Hi, Lucky. After our coffee, we headed to a local farmer's market and picked up the weekend's menu. You see, it's very sweet. Yeah. But it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good size to um, take in, you know? Yeah, yeah. You can get what you need for the day or for the weekend or whatever. <laughs> Here's the man right here. Ah, oh, yes. Quashish, which? Chickpeas. Ah, for the hummus. You will taste the, the grapes in the, in the garden. But now's a good time to have them. Okay. Nothing like fruit fresh like yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, like this. Mm. Oh, those are good. Mm -hmm. We kicked off lunch with something I came to love my first time here in Provence, and an apéro staple, rosé wine. Before it won me over, I looked at rosé as something cheap and too sweet. But here in Provence, it's much drier and perfect for a summer afternoon. Very important. Oh. So Gilles, will you tell me just a little bit about uh, this stuff? You, you see, you see here some different Bordeaux. What we tasted uh, yesterday? Oui. Okay. C'est ça. Yeah. yeah. Ouais. It was this one. Here it's a Poyac. Here we have some uh, Margot. Okay. This is Burgundy. Et Champagne rosé. Oh. A barrel with a American uh, American oak. Is that it's typical a, for to use American oak? Yeah, yeah. It's a for the rosé in Provence. Oh. It's a grand cru. What's the, what's grand cru? Grand cru. It's the the top of the top. Oh, okay. A oh, grand, grand. Oh, yeah. Okay. Why? Big because I was intronized. Yes. In the in the confrérie of Saint Emilion, and they they give me a, a diploma. Is, is red is supposed to be like room temperature, right? Yeah, yeah, but, but to keep to keep in a good shape, it's uh, you need a certain level of uh, humidity and you need a certain level of temperature. How many bottles do you think you have in here? One thousand. One thousand. <laughs> As I said before, this is really a farm, and the land this house sits on is still highly operational in that respect. On the grounds, Gilles and Jesus are growing olives, grapes, pears, apples, almonds, truffles, berries, and of course, the icon of Provence, lavender. In fact, there is so much lavender that they had to hire a local farmer to manage it all. Yeah, lots of lavender. Lucky's hanging out. We're gonna play a game of pétanque here. Here in Provence, beautiful evening it's turning out to be. Cedric, Gilles. Hello. They're going down. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, show, these, I'm gonna show these Frenchmen what's up. Yeah. It's me. Aha! No, no, attends, pousse-toi. Pousse-toi, chérie. Pousse-toi, Lucky. When? You will become unlucky. 
It's now dusty. Right. Me? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like you to win. Yeah. <laughs> this is a good excuse. Cedric 13. Dusty 8. Gilles 3. 3. Good game, good game. It started out great. We were so close. And then Cedric ran away with it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and now oh, it's a tradition. Yeah. It's uh, that uh, the loser will pay. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way it goes. <laughs> I like that tradition. These are the lavender fields. In early summer, this is covered with blossoms of purple. They'd already been harvested by the time I arrived, but that just meant I got to fill up my own bag of dried, fragrant lavender. Here you see Lorianne and I separating it from the stems. After a way too short stay, I had to hit the road again. Lorianne and Cedric headed back to Paris, and my journey carried me to nearby Avignon. Now in Avignon, in the south of France, I have about, I guess, one evening here to explore. So I'm gonna go do that. A little tired, had an epic weekend. Um, but yeah, time to go explore Avignon. Not bad. This, I guess, would be the Palace of the Pope when it was briefly left the, uh, the Vatican in Rome. We came here to Avignon. Some old walls, man. Old walls. This here is one of the most famous rivers in France and in Europe for that matter. This is the Rhone and most people know the Rhone because of its history with wine. A lot of great wine made in Côte de Rhone. How's my accent? Come out. And there was at one point I passed across the Rhone and it was really, really wide, like, like the Mississippi River in the USA. Super, super wide. Avignon replaced the Vatican for 68 years in the 14th century, which was a direct result of infighting and the growing power of the Kingdom of France. Seven popes lived here. All of them were French. That said, until the revolution centuries later, Avignon was a bit like Monaco is today, its own territory outside but deeply connected to the French state. After just one night in Avignon, I made my way to the southwest via Bordeaux. Okay. Uh, so I rented a car here in Bordeaux, I don't know, we'll see, and it's standard. I haven't driven a standard in, you know, 12 years. Hopefully it's like riding a bike. But here we go. Bon, bon route, bon route. Before moving on, I need to flash back to Paris and this guy, a friend of mine from New York, but who currently lives in Paris with his family. This is his studio, and what you see on the walls are rough drafts of a much bigger project. These paintings about a woman. Uh -huh. Is there a, yeah, beam, is there a particular feature that gives yeah. that away? What? Oh, those are <laughs> What Jean Paul is doing with these watercolor and ink women is turning them into stained glass. A project in collaboration with glass artists in the north of France to create a large stained glass book. I can only imagine what they'll actually look like because I've never seen anything like that. What is it, Jean Paul? Frank Your friend And he said it, not me. <laughs> the reason I preface with Jean Paul is because it's his brother's family that hosted me in the Southwest. A small, teeny tiny village named Saint Lalamine. We are in Lons. Dans les Lons. Wait, um, there's an EEC. Um, speak French, not English. I speak English, not French. So this is a good adventure for me to try to work on my very, very tiny French, but you can see where we are. Lond is a relatively new name existing only since the revolutionary reorganization of France. Before then it was Gascony, and before then the Romans called it Aquitania, which is actually still used today. To me it was a lush land of corn and sunflower fields with a collection of small towns that have a hint of Spain and a neighboring region the two countries share. Hey, Basque. Hello. Bonjour. Ça va? Oui. Et vous? Oui. Okay. Michael. Alan. 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 Okay. So this is Anne. 
Yes. Yes. Oui. Uh, and I am. Where am I? Où où est nous? Port de Où sont nous? Oh. Port de Lanne. Port de Lanne. And you can see. Anne and Alan are another set of glass artists that Jean Paul is collaborating with. True masters, they have sold and exhibited works all over the world and continue to do so. This is my first experience seeing glass work up close, and it's pretty fascinating. Oh, yeah, way. Yeah, come so. It will be an installation. Okay, and so you'll take all the pieces and put them together like an orange. We left the atelier, French for workshop, and went over to Anne and Alan's house for a proper Gascon meal. Kenna, pomme de terre. Pomme de terre avec rosé. Rosé. Oui. Ami. And pan. Le pan. Ah, ouais. Le baguette française. Le baguette. Le and you, you know how I feel about the French bread. It's just. After lunch, we went back to the atelier for me to begin my training. So the glass we have to mention. So you see always the flame blue. Yeah. And if you don't have it, you see that it's. Uh, Yellow. I see what it's for. Yeah. You see the difference? Yeah. Okay. Oh, right. Oh, cool. Other way, we could not work all the time. Ah, yeah. Okay. okay. This okay. And that um, slowly, 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 slowly. Don't forget that you have always to put the glass like this. Oui. Always. Also, okay. if you make points. That okay. That's really important. Okay. Okay? In French. Astuce. Astuce? Astuce. Oh. It's a, it's a astuce? A little trick. Oh, trick. little trick. Okay. Learning glass and learning French at the same time. <laughs> the next morning I followed Alan and Anne to the Basque town of Laosoa, which sits in the foothills of the Pyrenees mountain range that acts as the border of France and Spain. Here's another. This is Jean Marie. This is one of his specialties. Hot glass is like honey, and speed is essential to working with it. Though this video is slightly sped up, there is only a small window in which glass remains molten, so you must be quick. Et voilà, escargot. And once again, I got to try my hand at working with glass. This time it was glass blowing. I needed assistance and a second chance, but I got the job done. <laughs> there you see me react to the super intense heat coming off the hot glass. Working with glass is thousands of years old. Born in the Middle East, honed and spread by the Roman Empire, glass has only two naturally occurring places, a volcano and when lightning strikes sand pretty intense. And yet human innovation has made this rare alchemy ubiquitous in our modern world. That evening I headed to the city of Dax for the annual La Feria celebration, which has been made world famous by the running of the bulls that happens in Pamplona, the same festival there, which is also the Pay Basque, Basque Country. Yes, there were bullfights here, but mostly it was just copious amounts of alcohol and money. Yo, I'm in uh, uh, Bill, Bill, somewhere outside of Biarritz. Oh yeah, this is what I'm talking about. Beach town. Come out, man. Come out. All right, I'm here with my new friend Gary. Hi, documentary. Nice to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> Gary and I met last week. Exactly. On Il San Luis. On Il San Luis. Came fast friends. Went out like the next night. Exactly. And uh, watching. Myra and Mr. Mao. Myra and Mr. Mao, new band, really good band. New to me, anyway. Uh, it's beautiful, as you can see. This is a Basque country. This is Basque country. Uh, lots of sun, lots of beaches, lots of wind. I was glad to be back on the coast. Duh, it's my favorite place, and I have an obvious pep in my step here. Yeah. 
Yes. Yes. But beyond my love of the beach, I was curious to see what the surf scene was like down here. Yes, this was just a warm up for what I would do in the next few days, but nature provided me with a gorgeous sunset to behold and warm water to put my feet in. But before I move on to that true surf destination, a few wise words from Gary. Living the dream. To all you kids watching, be a musician, <laughs> because it's good for your cardio. <laughs> Truer words were never said. I've arrived in Oscar, the surf capital of Europe, so I'm told, and it's terrible weather. The rain is coming down. I'm driving around central Oscar right now. It looks like, you know, a nice, typical beachy situation. As you can see, the weather did get much, 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 much better, and the two days lived up to the Oscar hype. The town itself is cool, the beaches are pretty nice, but what really got me down here was the international collection of people I got acquainted with. And that had everything to do with where I stayed. That's where I am, right now. You see, kitchen. Movies. This is where, this is where I'll be sleeping the next two nights. Bro, oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> There's that Sony cam. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so we've got a little G star here. Five team, nineteen and a half, two and three eights. Probably the most beautiful girl I've ever touched. <laughs> Mr. Fussy. Mr. Fussy. And I reckon you should draw Mr. Fussy like what Mr. Yeah, Fussy. Yeah, draw Ooh. Mr. Fussy. I reckon Mr. Fussy would look like. I'm, I don't know why, but I'm matching really curly hair for something. <laughs> this is Jasmine from Sweden. Tell me something cool. Okay, well, we'll make it really easy. Uh, tell me something awesome in Swedish. Like one of your favorite phrases in Swedish. Oh, yeah. Oh, interesting. Okay. It is. It means like. Oh. Ah. Uh, I was like, yeah. Okay. Like, inhale, like, like what? Really? You just yeah. make a mouth noise? Yeah. That counts. You're gonna buy a board, huh? Maybe? Oh, yeah. Is it a maybe or is it definitely? Oh, this, is, this is purchase day. This is purchase day. Oh, and everybody, this is Rob. Hey guys. The Hosco Surf Hostel. It's his place. They got the cock sporty, made in France. Oh, right. Yeah, you gotta have the cock on yeah. it, man. <laughs> And then it was It was okay. But it was not really cheap. It was the same thing as that. It was around 500. This is Jan, the Kaimai warrior in Kiwi who looks like he's straight out of an Abercrombie ad. But he's one of the coolest and funniest dudes I've ever come across. And this is Bryce, an Aussie and Rob's second in command who was quick to share a beer or jump on the grill and smash out a ridiculous feast. They resonate a surf vibe that is so infectious. They're free, communal, fun-loving, and without pretension. Maybe that's what makes a good beach town. In any case, it was time to hit it. Yeah. Marinated ribs, man. The sexy man making the marinated ribs. Because one egg breads. Oh, yeah? Go search for spots somewhere down there. Voila! Yeah. That's an idea. Here's a fun fact most people don't know. In spite of ranking 41st in terms of size, France is the most visited country in the world. I'm told this is because of all the different climates and terrains the country boasts. I'm sure Paris, arguably the world's most beautiful city, has something to do with it. Truth is, you've only seen a small fraction of what France has to offer. Missing major bits of French fun, including the scenes of the Côte d'Azur, aka the Riviera, or climbing and skiing in the Alps. Oh yes, I'll be back, France. I'll be back. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Wander West. For more information about everything you saw and heard on this video, visit wanderwestroadtrips.com. That's wanderwestroadtrips.com.